Hi, this is André Valle here. I'm a SharePoint Solutions Architect at Create IT in Portugal, and I'm a proud member of the European SharePoint community. I'm here today to talk to you about host named site collections in SharePoint 2013. So, um, in this how to video, you'll learn what are host named site collections, when to use them, and how to create them. Let's start with the what. So standard site collections are also known as uh, path-based site collections. And the common structure is this one. You have a web application, uh, which has a host name, such as www.portal.com. And then you have uh, site collections inside that web application, which use a managed path and a word to differentiate between each, each other. And, and that builds the final URL which would be www.portal.com slash sites slash company A or company B. So host named site collections are still site collections, but instead of a managed path, you get a full host name and a different host name for each site collection, different from the web application. They've been around since uh, SharePoint 2003. Uh, at that time, they went by the name of scalable hosting mode and they had several limitations. But uh, in SharePoint 2013, most limitations have been resolved. Um, it was, this is a feature which was designed for scalability and, and for multi-tenancy scenarios. And it's actually used by Microsoft in Office 365 environments. So when should you use this? Well, of course, it's especially useful for multi-tenant scenarios since it's used that way. Um, also, when you have high scalability requirements regarding the number of sites that you have to create. Look at the scenario. Uh, SharePoint has a supported limit of 20 web applications per farm. So if you need to have more than 20 portals with different host names, you can't go with the web application. You have to go a different way, and the, the, the way is host name site collections. SharePoint can handle up to 250,000 site collections per farm, assuming that you will share uh, content databases so that you have uh, more than one site collection on a single content database. If you use, even if you use a separate content database per site collection, you can still scale up to 500 site collections per farm. According to Microsoft, um, this is now the recommended way of creating your, uh, of, uh, creating your site collection structure. Uh, and it's recommended over path-based site collections on most scenarios, except in these cases. If you need to use multiple application pools, if you want to have multiple service application proxy groups, uh, if you want to use different authentication methods for each site collection, because in this case, since all of them belong to the same web application, you'll have to use the same configurations that are defined at the web application level. Also, if you need to use the self-service site creation feature, this is not supported for host name site collections. So in that w if that's the case, you have to go some other way. Finally, if you require SSL termination, but your SSL termination device cannot be configured to produce a specific custom HTTP header, then you have to go another way too. There are uh, documentation about this specific scenario online on, on TechNet. So how do you create host name site collections? First of all, you cannot create them in central administration. You must use PowerShell commandlets. Here's the process. First of all, you create a web application. You configure an IIS binding. And then you create a root site collection, which is required for calling purposes. And then you can create your host name site collections, any number you want. And then, if required, you can set alternate URLs for each host name site collection. So let's go to a demo. I will just demonstrate how to do this on a uh, SharePoint 2013. Okay, so for the demo, I'll be showing you how to create a uh, host named site collections following the steps that I've highlighted on the previous slides. So this is the central administration portal for SharePoint 2013. This one is empty, has only the default uh, two uh, applications. One for central administration, the other for the app uh, catalog. You can also see that uh, in IIS, there's only the the same uh, default websites and for the, the databases also only for the databases used in by the service applications so the first thing let's just open here the PowerShell ISE 
So you just first you have to add the snap in for uh, Microsoft SharePoint. Afterwards, I have a, a bunch of uh, parameters here to help me with the uh, script. Uh, next, we have to create an authentication provider. In this case, we'll be using Windows authentication um, for the web application. And now we have the uh, new SPWare application commandlet that will allow us to uh, perform the first step, which is create the web application. This step could be done uh, manually in the central administration portal. Um, I'm just doing it here by uh, by script so that it, it uh, all the whole experience is, is uh, PowerShell based. So we will create a new web application uh, whose name will be Portal Web App with the host header webappportal.com on port 80. Uh, create a new application pool called SharePoint Portal um, with an application pool account of the owner Elias, which is defined here on this parameter. So it's a VM slash administrator. And then we'll create a new database for content called um, WSS content underscore portal. We'll, we'll allow anonymous access and we will um, also use the authentication provider that we just created on the previous line. So just to check if this works, let's just select this and run the selection. Uh, so running this uh, command will take a while. This is uh, the one that takes longer because it will be creating the application pool and also the content database. So let's just wait for it to, to finish. So now that the web application is created, uh, the next step is to add a new binding to uh, the IIS website. So you could do also do this, uh, this operation directly on the IIS manager. So uh, in practice, what we're going to do is create a new binding for the, the, the website for the host header star and the IP address star, which means any host header and any IP address will always map to this website. It will be uh, SharePoint's um, job to um, separate which uh, request goes to which site collection. Okay, So this is actually a requirement and this is also why um, it is uh, recommended that you have a single web application because all the requests will go, will be, um, will be treated by that uh, single web application, the, the single IIS website. So let's just uh, run this. Okay, done. Let's just check uh, the state of, status of things. So going back to SharePoint, let's just refresh this. We should have a new application here. In the meanwhile, while it loads, let's just go to IIS, also refresh this. Okay, here's the portal web app. If we check the bindings for it, now we have this binding here, which is uh, for any hostname and any IP address on port 80 and uh, protocol HTTP, which means all requests will be directed to this website. Okay, here it is, the portal web app. So now the next next thing we have to do is create the three site collections. We have to create a, a root site collection. That's a mandatory step, although even if we don't actually use it. Um, and then we have to create the site collections, the host name site collections, uh, the, the ones that we want. So all the three lines are, are the same. The first one will have to be the root site collection. So we'll call it uh, root.portal.com. This is the magic parameter here. So this is the, the parameter that will um, group all site collections um, and, and state to, to and tell SharePoint that these are host named site collections inside the web application. Um, and, and it's the, the host the, the web app host header is used to, to map them to, to bind them together. So the first one is the root site, then the next one will be for company A and the third one for company B. They're all the same. The difference here is the, the first one uses the root site template uh, and the other ones use site, uh, the site template which has, is defined here as a parameter. So the, the root site will be um, a team site and the, the, other the, the other websites will use a publishing site site template. So uh, you could use all the same templates for all the, the site collections. That's that's doesn't matter for this case. All that will be created in English, which is language code 1033. So let's just 
run these three um, instructions. So the site collections are all created according to the PowerShell output. Let's just check. Let's go back to central administration, application management, view all site collections. Okay, here they are the root.portal.com, companya.com, companyb.com. So they are all created. Let's just now, uh, let's get to each one. So company A, here we are, and company B. Okay, so you, as you can see by the URL, um, we can we can get to the site collections using a host name, actually different host names, actually even different from the host name of the web application. Uh, the limitation is that we have a single application with a single application pool, as we can see here. Okay, back to the slides. Thank you for uh, watching this how-to video. See you next time.